Hey there, John Morris here with JohnMorrisOnline.com, and welcome to another episode of The John Morris Show. And in this episode, we're going to be covering how to do PHP redirects. I'm going to show you a 301 redirect, and then I'm also going to actually show you how to create a script for handling this so you can engage or you can create redirects on an ongoing basis instead of constantly having to, to rewrite individual redirects. So if that's something that you'd like to learn, know how to do, then be sure to stay tuned for the episode. This episode is sponsored by the Complete Web Developers Course taught by Rob Percival on Udemy.com. Now what I love about this course is first how comprehensive it is. It's 235 lectures on HTML, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery, Bootstrap, WordPress, PHP, MySQL, APIs, and mobile apps. I mean, it's ridiculous. Second, I love how good of a teacher Rob is. As a former school teacher, Rob knows how to explain complex concepts in ways anyone can understand. And of course, the cool thing is I talked Rob into giving my audience an 85% discount on the course. So check the description of this video for a special link that contains a coupon code good for 85% off of the Complete Web Developers course by Rob Percival. Click that link and you'll be all set for the discount. Now, on to the episode. All right, so real quick here, let me just cover the idea of what we're going to do here. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually create a script that allows us to send or pass certain information in query parameters and based on that, then we can engage in certain redirects. So if we go over to our file that we're creating here called redirect.php, if I pass this, now I'm echoing out the URL right now, I'm not actually doing the header redirect yet, but if I pass this an ID of Goog, which is short for Google, you notice that here it creates the URL for Google and this is what we're going to actually redirect to. So we're going to do some stuff before the actual redirect that allows us to, again, set up multiple redirects, but use this exact same script in order to do it. All right, so that's the idea here. Now let's go ahead, and then of course I'm going to also show you how to do the actual 301 redirect. So let's go ahead and jump into the code here. So the first thing that we do here is we map what I'm calling IDs to URLs. Now, you don't necessarily need to do this. You could actually just set this script up so that you could pass it a URL as a query parameter and it could redirect to that URL. However, having uh, a whitelist of IDs that map to URLs does two things. One, it builds in a little bit of security here so that someone couldn't just use your script to uh, run their own redirects that they want to do. They'd have to know the IDs that are accepted here in order to be able to, to use this script. So it gives you kind of a base level of security. Obviously, it's not over the top. But the, the second thing that it does is a lot of times when you have these redirects like this, what you're trying to do is cloak the URL that you're sending them to. So it could be for affiliate marketing. It could be for a number of different reasons. But a lot of times what you're having to do is cloak that URL. So this is how you do that. Because when you pass in that ID, nobody's really going to know what that ID is. And at the very least, they can't hijack the link. In the case of affiliate marketing, they can't hijack the link and put in their own affiliate code because they don't know what it is because you're not passing it, you're passing in an ID. All right, so this is again uh, how you kind of whitelist it and how you can cloak and give a little bit of security to your redirect script. All right, so it's really simple. You just have an array and you have an ID that corresponds to a URL and then in your when you send create a link that, that you're gonna send to this script, you would just set your query parameter of ID to the ID that you want the redirect to, to go to. So this creates kind of your base URL here. In this case, it's just Google. Next, we're just going to do a, a quick check to see if an ID has been passed to the script. And if not, we're going to kill the script because there's really nothing we can do with it if we don't have an ID. We don't know what URL 
we need to send someone to to do the redirects. We're just going to kill the script. Next, uh, if we pass that check, then we assume that we have our ID here. So we're going to go ahead and grab that and store it in a variable. So that's what we're doing here. And then next, we're going to check to see if the ID is in our list of supported IDs. So we're going to just check our map that we created up here and see if that ID that we got passed is accepted by in our accepted IDs array up here. So you can see we just do if in array, we pass an ID. I'm doing array keys and then accepted IDs because we need to check the key. In array by default, we'll actually check the values. So we just wrap it in array keys to create a new array of just the keys. And then we can um, check it, check against that. So that's what we need to do here. And then of course here, we're just dying and saying that ID is not supported if that ID isn't in our accepted IDs up here. Okay, so that's kind of your base level security here. And then from there, uh, in this particular case, uh, I've set up this UTM campaign query that can be added. Now, this is really just an example. What this is really meant for is where you can add query variables to the end of your redirect. So we can redirect them to google.com, but if we wanna add query parameters to the end of that URL, and again, this is something that you'll find a lot of people wanna do with affiliate marketing and so forth, uh, they'll want to add query parameters to the end of this particular URL and they'll want it to be they want it to be dynamic so that they can change they can create links and send it to the script and have it add the query parameters that they need and so forth. And a lot of times it's campaign based. So that's why we're using UTM campaign here. So uh, we're going to see if that's been passed and again i'll walk through some of the examples of how to use this here in just a minute but we're going to see if that query parameter has been passed and if it does we're just going to set it as a variable here this could be a whole bunch of different query variables right here so uh, you could add a number of these depending on what you know what you're building this for who you're building it for what query parameters they want to be able to append to the end of your base url Right, so that's an example of how to do that. And from there, we're just going to create the redirect. So we're going to do a sprint f, and we're going to uh, pass in our base URL. So we're we're mapping our accepted IDs and the ID that was passed. This will grab our. So in, in this particular case, Goog was passed, and it's set as ID here. And so we're going to pass it in here. We'll grab accepted IDs Goog, which is Google.com, and so that will uh, be put in in place of this placeholder here. And then we're doing end Q equals, and then we're passing in our query parameters. So this could actually go on. You could add more placeholders, and you can go on and on and on with more query parameters if you needed to. And in this particular case, we're gonna echo the redirect. I'll show you how to do the actual header redirect here in a second. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the script on the front end. So a couple things here. First off, if I just go to redirect.php, you'll notice I get my die error. Oops, need an ID. Okay, so that's our first check. Next, it, let's say I pass in an ID that is not supported. So let's do Yahoo, which was not in our accepted list. You'll say, oops, that ID is not supported. Now, you could change these errors. You can maybe do redirect somewhere else if the, these things aren't passed. You could kind of handle this however you would like. In this particular case, I'm just killing the script. All right, so then let's assume that we do Goog and we get a right one. Now you can see we're just echoing out and we got our base URL and then we have our query, which is blank because we didn't pass in a query. So you remember our query was UTM campaign, so we could do end UTM campaign equals, we'll just do one, two, three, four, five, six. And if we hit that, then you can see now we have a link here that we can redirect to kind of so uh this is kind of building the link one thing you'll notice is this is actually an and link uh, as opposed to the question mark for starting off a, a query variable now the reason that is is because when i built this i built this for urls up here that are always going to have query parameters already appended to them and we just need to and add one to the end of it if you don't, if you have base URLs like this where we're not 
doing that, then you want to change this to a question mark if it's going to be the first query variable. And then any ones you add after that, you would use the and to add more query variables. All right. So that gives us kind of an idea of, you know, how to build this script up so you can use this for multiple redirects. Now, how do you actually run the redirect? So we'll go ahead and comment out our echo here and we'll uncomment our header uh, function here. So you just use the PHP header function and then in it you, uh, you can use double or single quotes but here we're using double quotes. You do location colon and then the redirect URL that you want them to go to. So in this case we've done all this to build that URL and now we can actually run the header redirect. So now if we come back over here and we refresh this then we actually get sent to Google and you can see we passed a query and in Google uh, when the, the Q equals actually happens to be what they use. So it's searching for one, two, three, four, five, six. So if you want to do some redirects to Google, by the way, that's, <laughs> that's how you can do that. Um, but you can see it did the actual redirect here. Okay. So that's how to do a redirect and it's pretty straightforward. Now, how do you do a 301 redirect? Well, you just add another header statement. Again, double quotes, and inside of it, you do this HTTP slash one slash one dot one three hundred one moved permanently. So you essentially have add this header item to it, and that will tell search engines or whatever happens to be accessing this particular redirect that this is a permanent move. So that's all there is to do a three hundred one redirect. Now you could of course use a 302 redirect and you could do that as well. So depending on what type of redirect you want to do, you could change this, this header statement right here to accomplish it. All right. So that's again, running the actual redirects pretty straightforward. We've kind of built a script that allows us to do multiple redirects. And then the last thing here that we do is we exit the script. All right, so that is accomplishing a PHP 301 redirect and a, and a script for allowing us to create multiple redirects so you don't have to constantly create individual ones. You can use the script and kind of adapt it to your needs uh, and then just create links that you send to it and they'll perform the redirects for you. Now, if you wanna get access to this source code, then the way to do that is to head on over to johnmorrisonline.com slash resources or if you're on my website, you can simply click the resources tab right up here, and that will take you to my web developer resources page. Now I have a whole all kinds of web developer resources on here from classes to the different tools that I use. But if you scroll down to the bottom here, then you'll see a section called code snippets and you'll see PHP code snippets, WordPress code snippets and Genesis code snippets. So you can go ahead and click on through to the code snippets that apply for the video you're watching and you'll be able to get access to th that code snippet. Now, if we click here, for example, on PHP code snippets, then we will be taken to that page and you'll see all of the different code snippets here and you can click through and you'll get the video, you'll get the description and you'll get the code snippet as well. So again, head on over to johnmorrisonline.com slash resources head on down to the code snippet section to get access to the snippet that you're after. Of course, while you're here, you might as well look around and see some of the other developer tools and courses that I have available here that are going to help you down your path of becoming a web developer. And since I'm constantly adding to this page, then you might as well bookmark this page and check back often so you can see all of the things that I've added and get access to all of the tools and snippets and courses and things that I'm using throughout my career. All right, that'll do it for this episode. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.